Hello all, this is Dr. Anand Nayar. Subscribe to my YouTube channel Gyan with Anand Nayar for latest tech videos on unboxings, server administration, embedded systems, cloud computing, simulations, big data, Linux administration, research methodology, ethical hacking and many more. Hello researchers, how are you? I hope you are fine and doing well. In this video, I will be demonstrating how to install Slackware 14.2 distribution on VMware Workstation 14 Pro. Now before we dive in the installation part of Slackware 14.2 Linux distribution on VMware Workstation, let us first of all understand what is Slackware. Slackware is a Linux distribution created by Patrick Walkerding in 1993. Originally based on soft landing Linux system, Slackware has been the basis for many other Linux distributions, most notably the first versions of SUSE Linux distributions and is the oldest distribution that is still maintained. Slackware aims for design stability and simplicity and to be the most Unix-like Linux distribution, it makes a few modifications as possible to software packages from upstream and tries not to anticipate use cases or pre preclude user decisions. In contrast to most modern Linux distributions, Slackware provides no graphical installation procedure and no automatic dependency resolution of software packages. It uses plain text files and only a small set of shell scripts for configuration and administration. Without further modification, it boots into a command line interface environment because of its many conservative and simplistic features, Slackware is often considered to be the most suitable for advanced and technically inclined Linux users. Slackware is available for Ethanium 32 and 64-bit architectures with a port to the ARM architecture. While Slackware is mostly free and open source software, it doesn't have a former bug tracking facility or public code repository with releases periodically announced by Volkerting. There is no formal membership procedure for developers and Volkerting is the primary contributor to releases. So the source model for Slackware Linux is open source and it is available in multi languages and update method is PKJ tools and Slack package which I will be discussing after installing Slackware in my video and the kernel type is monolithic. Now let's talk something that what is the history behind the name how the Slackware name came. The name Slackware stems from the fact that the distribution started as a private site project with no intended commitment. To prevent it from being taken too seriously at first, Volker didn't take it to a humorous name which stuck even after Slackware became a serious project. Slackware refers to Pursuit of Slack, a tenant of the Church of Subgenius. Certain aspects of Slackware graphics reflect this, the pipe which Tux is smoking as influenced by the image J.R. Bob Dog head. So the birth of Slackware was derived from SoftLang Linux system and the most popular Linux distribution to provide a comprehensive software collections as compared to other distributions in terms of kernel and basic utilities and even includes X11 graphical interface, TCP IP, UUCP networking and GNU Emacs. So the history is very long so you can even refer the website for more details of Slackware. So let us come to the website. You can see that I have already opened the main website that is slackware.com and you can find most important information that is what is upcoming, what is there and the latest version is 14.2 which is released. So if you go to security advisors, FAQ, book and even general information. So if you go with general information you can find what is Slackware, what is the philosophy, what is the Slackware overview and if you go, go on packages you can find that all the website that is https let's open this website that is https packages of slackware.com it contains all the packages which are available till date so you can just how to download it let us go to the main web page that is slackware.com so you can see that over here we have an option that is called get slack so if you have the two options that is either you can download via torrent which is the safer side and you can even install via mirror via the ISO file using your internet download manager or any download based software which manages your download on your computer with this. So let's click on the torrent page let us open in a new tab. So you can find that uh, entire image that is 14.2 DVD ISO which includes everything except the source code and even a DVD which includes the source code as well it is available to download. So even you can just go to back and you just click on mirrors. So you just go to the Slackware ISO images. I will leave all the links in the description below to my video. So click on the Slackware 64 14.2 ISO. 
and you can find all the details that is about a 2.6 GB of the DVD size to download it. So I have already downloaded so let us uh, go to the part B of this video so without wasting time let us start with the installation part of Slackware on VMware Workstation. So here is my VMware Workstation 14 Pro so let's go and click on create a new virtual machine. So let's click on next. So just take this option I will install the operating system later so click on next so we just have the Linux and we just choose that is other Linux 3.x kernel 64 bit so make it sure that you choose this option otherwise the slackware will not work efficiently in VMware workstation so click on next and let us type the name that is slackware 14.2 Linux or whatever name you want to give so for better visualization I just take the name of the Linux as well so click on next and I allocate about 30 GB of disk space so it is better that you allocate 30 GB or above 20 GB of disk space to the distribution so click on next so let's customize the hardware so let's allocate 2 GB of RAM which is enough for it and just click on new CD and DVD and let's click on use ISO image file and click on browse and let's go to my D drive operating system and let's grab on the slackware 6414.2 so let's right click and click on properties so you can see that it is about 2.58 GB of size so it's a not a very big size not a small size it's a medium size of Linux and till date lots of packages are available so click on open and I click on close and we just click on finish so you can see that the machine will be created and let's click on power on this virtual machine So I just click on view and I click on full screen. So you can see that the machine has started booting. So let's press enter or the first option. So it is decompressing the Linux. So let's wait for option. So the first option has come that is option to load support for non-US keyboard. So let's press enter to select a keyboard map. So let's press enter. So we have to go for the QWERTY that is US map. So let's press enter and let's type something that is test and let's press one again in order to quit. So now what you have to go is to just log in as root. So just type root and you can see that it has logged in. So the first work which we have to perform is to partition the hard disk drive. So what we have to do is to just type the command that is CF disk. So after pressing CF disk you will see that select the label type GPT DOS SG or Sun so select DOS and press enter. So here we have the free space so we have to type the two partitions that is swap as well as root so just press new and just type 2 and capital G so take it as primary and just go for type and you just select Linux swap. So you can see that the swap space is set up. So just go to free space, click on new, partition size will be default that is 28G. So primary and just go for write. So type yes, it will be done. So let's quit. So you can see that it has synced the disk and now let's clear first of all. And now what we have to do is to just start the setup by typing the command that is setup. So you can see that the Slackware Linux setup has been started so what we have to do is to go for these options that is help, key map, etc, add swap, etc. So just press add swap and press enter. So just select OK and just select yes to check for any bad blocks. So it will check it will take some time and it is setting up the swap partitions so let's press OK so for the Linux partition OK that is selection and let's format it with ext4 let's press OK so it is formatted and now what we have to do is to install from the media that is we have to take the first step that is as we have already mounted the ISO image so let's press OK so we don't have to go for any manual scan so let's go for auto so all the simple steps are coming very simple steps are there so a slackware disk has been found so if you want to add any other option you can add otherwise you can see that most of the options are checked so including the games XFC environment everything is there so let's press OK so you can see that there are almost uh, all these steps over there that is folders menu etc etc so just press full and press enter so it will take some time to install all the packages so till it install let us 
pause the video for some time. So you can see that some of the packages are already installed from A, B, C, D and E and now it is installing E based packages. So till Z it will be installing depending on how much packages are there at default. So the installation time can vary from 11 minutes to 25 minutes depending on the speed of your computer. So you can see that it has done installing the packages and now it is preparing to configure our system. So please wait while we install mkfoot in the food directory in the font directories. So it is about the fonts. So let's wait for the font directories to finish and now it is font config update which is done. So it says that make the USB flash boot device so I don't want to have so click on skip and let's have the simple that is to try automatically standard for frame buffer console and just we want uh, for optional so it is ok so it is no it is safe so let's click on no and let's install the master boot record let's press enter so it is installing the Linux loader so for the mouse I am ju just having USB connected mouse which is a wireless mouse so you can just go with USB connected mouse and press OK so should we load the program at the boot time so it is OK should we configure the network yes we should configure so let's take the host name as slackware 2018 so let's press OK so we don't requ uh, we require this uh, the domain name that is slackware2018.com it is okay for me so it will be DHCP only so if you have a static IP you can just configure with static IP but I want in this machine a DHCP based address to be given by the VMware workstation so I just take DHCP as okay so I just hit enter and you can see that IP address will be using the DHCP server gateway and name server will be used by DHCP so let's press enter so over here we have some uh, services to be started at the boot time so let's take with the default services itself so let's press OK so would you like to try some custom screen fonts so I just don't want it so let's click no and uh, yes hardware clock is set to UTC it is OK which can be like this with the US or Asia I can just select over there and just we have to move downstairs much downstairs so Asia I can just select the Bangkok okay so it is okay for me so KDE based desktop environment it is okay for KDE as such so let's press OK and we have to set the root password so let's press yes and type the password and it is okay so now you can see that the installation configuration is complete and now we can reboot the system so let's press OK so let's go and click on exit and press OK and yes it is there so let's press enter for operating system so it has started so this means that for slackware we have booted in a safe and sound manner and installation was an ultimate success so you can see that uh, it is still today it is a DOS based installation and it reminds me of the old Windows 3.1 or even the DOS based installations so still even in 2018 we find Slackware a very highly interactive and easy based installation if you follow steps so it is entering the run level 3 which means it is a uh, going to be the command mode but I will show you how to enter in the graphical mode in a couple of seconds so we are almost done it is having SHA-256 key okay so it is demanding for login so let's login with root and let's type the password so let's clear this and now what we have to do is to just edit one file and we have to edit one option only so that when we reboot after that we will enter into the graphical desktop that is a KDE so let's go with this command that is vi slash etc slash any tab so over here there are different run levels so make it sure you remove 3 by pressing delete and 
check it as 4. So let me go over there. Okay, so let me go again. And let type 4. Okay, so it's press escape, so colon and WQ, it is quits, so it is done. So let's reboot. So after reboot, it will go into the main uh, graphical based interface with KDE as the default desktop. So it is rebooting. So let's press enter. And after it reboots, I will just uh, give a quick tour of you all for the KD-based desktop for Slackware 14.2 Linux, which we just installed in this video. So it is mounting all the non-root partitions. And now you can see that we are entering into the run level 4. You can see over here. So it has been given IP address that is 192.168.68.128. So which means that it is connected to the internet also. So let's wait for the X11 session. It can take some time for the first time, but after that it will be fast. So you can see that it has given me the KD desktop username and password. So let's type root and my password. And we have logged in. So this shows that we have successfully installed Slackware 14.2 on VMware Workstation 14 Pro and it's a great server. It is the very experienced Linux, I can say, highly stable and highly, highly secure. So at the first time, it will take some time. So all the tools, you can see that it is booting. So we will find the main option of KDE like Windows button over here. So kick off applications, favorites, computer places. So let's go with this. So we have the web browser, mail client, system settings, file manager. Okay. So we go to just system settings and we just go to the display and monitor. So here we have the size and orientations. So we just go and choose our size of the laptop that is 1360768 and you just click on apply. So you can see that it has given me the best resolution and let's close it. So let's take a quick tour of what are the applications which are there. So in education we have languages, mathematics, miscellaneous, science. So lots and lots of applications are there. So let's go back with education. We have games. Games we have all the toys, board games, card games. So all things are available. So graphics we have, image editing software, PDF viewer. So it is fully, fully loaded, I can say. Internet, we have uh, the feed runner. We have the mail client, that is Thunderbolt. We have the Firefox as itself with different Linuxes. We have multimedia, that is audio player. We have CD ripping, disc burning, video player also. So system office also, which we have, that is, uh, I think, so it is word processor, some scalable graphics, and even the project management software. It is rarely seen, I can say. So utilities we have, that is character map, so almost it is a fully, fully loaded Linux. So in this video, I have demonstrated how to install Slackware 14.2 and how to set up your uh, KD-based desktop into Slackware 14.2. So do give this video a shot do install this Linux onto your real working environment. So do comment. I will leave my whole of the links which you have used and even my personal links in the description below. So do subscribe to my channel and hit the bell notification to get you get updated as soon as I update or upload any video on my channel. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you very much.